Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with more Vermin Skaven Tide. I keep calling it Vermin Tide. Skaven Tide content. As you know, I have been trundling through a couple of videos trying to get you guys ready for the actual box launch so that when you do get your hands on it, you will be more comfortable getting the miniatures in the box set painted up. Easily, fast, effective, all those other buzzwords. So in today's video, I'm gonna be tackling some of the clan rats. And I thought the best way to do this is to go through one of the kind of old styles of videos I used to do for things like my Tyranids and my Eldar. And I'm gonna give you three paint schemes in a single video for the clan rats. I'm gonna give you Verminous, which is the warlike style Skaven, Plague, so the green, gnarly, nurgly style ones, and the Eshen ones, the Assassins. So three different paint schemes, very easy, very quick to follow through on. I think it's gonna be super important because there is 40 clan rats inside of this box set. So I think most people will be looking for a quick and easy way to paint them up. So hopefully this video will help you guys out. Before I get into it, I just say thank you to all of my new patrons over on that platform. It is great to see new faces over there. If you're interested in getting involved with that yourself, link down in the description below, you get access to a private Discord server and access to an extra vlog style video most days of the week from me, keeping you guys up to date what's happening in my channel. Uh, from a day-to-day -day basis. So if that's something that interests you, check it out, link below. All right, guys, without further ado, let's dive in and get some of these Skaven clan rats painted. Okay, so the reason I chose these three specific Skaven hosts is because literally in the instructions, they give you these as three options, Verminous, Eshin, and Pestilence, which leads me to believe that these will be quite common uh, armies that people are going to collect moving forward. So I decided to do a video on all three of them, showing you how to get the basic clan rat painted up. So I'm going to start with the verminous one here. Now it's going to be kind of like a quick fire round. It's just to help you guys understand what colors to use, where to use them, how to layer it up and how to keep it simple. Remember, these are just clan rats. The scopes are stellar, unbelievable. But at the end of the day, they're just clan rats. If you're doing a Skaven army, you'll have 40, 80, 120 of these dudes on the table. So painting them fast is going to be key. Okay, and like I said, we're gonna begin with the Clan Verminous. So we're gonna start with Gulliman Flesh over all of the, of course, skin parts on the miniature. Now he does have tufts of fur. He's not the same kind of makeup as like a, a rat ogre or anything like that with the stretched skin and some of it's torn. It's fairly simplistic. So I just do Gulliman Flesh across all of the bare skin, including the fur. And we'll touch that up a little bit later with an actual fur color. The miniatures, all got base coat of the same. So they got a coat of Chaos Black Spray and then an overcoat of a Xandri Dust, not Xandri Dust, apologies, Grey Seer. It's my go-to style of getting ready for contrast and I think it works a treat. After the skin tone, we moved over to Lead Belger and painted up all the armor panels that exist on this rat in that color. So obviously he's got a little bit of chest armor. It goes up around his head. He's got a nice little like spiked plume thing in his helmet, makes him stand out the blade of his weapon, and of course, all the little ringlets of chainmail that these guys have kind of coming through their robes. So you got to find all those bits and pieces. Now, there is a couple of other metallic parts on the miniature, but we don't want to do it all silver. Skaven are renowned for their kind of brass and cogwork look. So we are going to grab our Balthazar gold, and we're going to use this to base coat the remaining parts of the metallics. So I'm going to go for the details and accents on his blade. And then the kind of clan symbol that wraps around his shield as well, I'm gonna do in that color as well. Once again, this is very quick, very, very easy. I reckon when I do turn my hand to painting up the rest of the clan rats from this box set, so the other 37 clan rats, I'll be painting them in batches of 10. And I'll basically just be kind of trundling through them a night, like 10, 10 do the night for a little while. Okay, so for those fur bits I was talking about, I grabbed a gore grunt of fur and put this over all of the little tufts that show through on the skin. Because the Gulliman flesh is such a pale color, like I said, it's not kind of dark, it's not a thing. The, the Gorgon to fur goes over beautifully and gives us some nice little fur details sticking out on these guys. Also, all the little rats that exist climbing over or under these miniatures, you will find them on a bunch of different clan rats, get painted the same. So the skin tone went on their face and their legs, tails, and the Gorgon to fur went on the little furry bodies, and that works a treat. After that, we moved over to Blood Angel's Red Contrast and it was time to start getting their robes in. Because we're going for the Verminous Clan, which is the warlike clan, they tend to have a lot of red fabric on their banners and kind of draped over them. So we're going to go for Blood Angel's Red Contrast for that. And this is, of course, going to make the model pop. This is also a great point in the scheme where you can change it up. If you are not interested in doing red, you follow every single step in this video the same. You just swap out this red color and then the layer color later on with a different color, whether that be you know, blue or purple or, I don't know, orange, whatever you want to do. When that's done, we are going to go for an Agrax Earthshade and apply that all over the miniature. The Agrax Earthshade being a brown shade, 
it shades over everything really well obviously these are skaven they're supposed to be dirty and grimy and you know the red is okay to be shaded with brown it really does dull down and kind of nasty up the metallics works a treat and even over the flesh and skin all those other parts it looks great while this is drying we are going to jump on and throw some texture paste on the base and get that kind of ready for the layering stage here is the, the model with all the shade on and as you can see it does add an absolutely like it's a mental effect shade does do to miniatures and of course if you are not really interested in painting and you do not want to push the miniature past here if the model's at this stage and based more power to you go for it play a bunch of games i think this looks great it's a finished miniature in my eyes I think people put a lot of emphasis on how finished, like what is a finished model? There is color in all the correct places. It is shaded, it is detailed. I think it looks fantastic. And when it's in a big horde of 40 guys, no one's gonna care, it's gonna look great. You can spend the rest of the time on some of your bigger creatures. This is a great thing if you are someone who's not interested in painting. If painting isn't your hobby, but you wanna have a painted army, stop at this stage, get the whole army to here. I promise you, you'll like it. But if you do wanna step it, uh, step forward, and we're gonna go for Mephiston Red, and we're gonna apply this all over the robes. Just on the raised areas, we're going to leave all the nice folds dark and all the recesses grimy. We're going to grab some Cadian Flesh Tone and highlight the skin. Once again, very quick, as you can see, I'm not going all over them, just aiming for those raised areas, those higher peaks, the tips of the ears, nose, the tail, all the different ringlets that go down his tail are going to get done in that skin tone as well. Fingers, make sure all those bits kind of jump out at you. As you can see, we really are trucking through this paint scheme because you want to get these guys done, like I said, in a very quick manner. Back to Lead Belcher. That's another thing that I try and do for you guys. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but when I am painting with things, I think it's okay to do things like using a paint to base coat a miniature and then after the model has been shaded, going back to that color to layer. I could have easily grabbed a slightly brighter silver, but that's just adding another paint that you need to buy into it. I tend to use Lead Belcher shaded and then highlight it again with lead belcher even my goals is usually retributor armor gold shaded and then i pull lead belcher to highlight it i think it works great so here's our finished verminous clan rat there's things like i put a little coat of like a pale color on the teeth and i painted his eyes red that's it it's the only two bits that i did not show you on painting this guy it took absolutely no time at all to get him done and i think he stands out really nicely and like I said, if I had a squad of, or you know, two squads of 20 or a big block of 40 of these guys on the table, I think they're going to look awesome. Next, we're going to move over to Pestilence. Base coat are exactly the same, black and gray seer. And then we're going to do the exact same thing with the skin, Gullum and Flesh. Now, we are going to do some different things later on to make his skin stand out just a little bit more and be a little bit more, like, different. And you will see that, and I think it's really cool what we do do. But yeah, Gullum and Flesh works a treat on the base coat for all of the skin. And obviously I chose a model that kind of screamed a little bit more verminous with the, the kind of robes that drape down his body. He's got a little pot belly on him and he's wielding like a, like a wooden flail style thing, a morning star, and which is kind of like it suits their style and aesthetic if you know anything about their lore. Plague Bear of Flesh was brought in and used as the base coat for all of the robes. Then we want that dirty green look. I don't want them as dark as those traditional kind of pestilence clan rats look or plague monks look. I want them to be a little bit brighter and this guy is actually the one that turns out uh, in my opinion the best i don't actually want to own a pestilence skaven army so it's kind of irritating to me that this scheme looks the best and i want to paint more of them but it's neither here nor there eshin is really the one that i want to do it's just such a dark scheme but as you can see this goes over the grace here a treat it looks fantastic and you just need to be careful not to hit any of the skin bits and obviously pick out the difference between kind of armor and belts and straps and all those other bits. It's it's fine. But it is quite a pale color. So if you do make any mistakes, you're going to be probably going over with a darker contrast or a metallic later on. And it won't make too much of a difference. Okay, with the robe all done and dry, what we're going to do is once again go back over to our lead belcher. And just like the previous ones, we're going to start finding all the different metallic parts. So like I said, the ringlets underneath the robes. He's got some metal details like the, the hinge of the morning star is basically, or it's not a hinge, but you know what I mean. The part that connects the two bits of wood together is going to be silver. I probably could have done the spikes at the end of the morning star flail thingy as like nails and done them as metal spikes, but I, I didn't do it in the end. Maybe I just forgot about it or maybe I had a reason not to, but I can't remember. So that's a choice you have to do. But obviously he's got his armor back in his head as well. 
Skeleton Horde is the color I then grab for things like the shield color and the wood. I wanted that like a kind of slightly brighter, more pestilency wood, kind of worn down old bone color. I didn't want a really rich brown or a nice wood tone. And I think this is one of the main things, that green plus this skeleton hoard all the wood, I think makes just the biggest difference. And like I said, this scheme looks the best because I, I thoroughly believe if you see 40 of them painted like this on a tabletop, it's gonna look so good. Look how good the skeleton hoard does over the, the wood. Like obviously I'm gonna add the shade to this because I'm gonna be shading the entire miniature, that one color. But I don't touch the wood again after that. Like the, the, the just the skeleton horde and the shade did everything I wanted it to. Gorgon to fur once again for picking out those tufts of. Now you can decide to have you know Gorgon to fur and I don't know three or four other brown or gray or black furs or colors sorry set aside. And when you're going across doing the furs, you can kind of kind of mix and match so they don't all have the same color fur like rats wouldn't have if you so wish. You could also use that as a way of distinguishing squads. Maybe one squad of 20 has all brown fur, maybe one has all black fur, maybe all gray fur, just to help you break them up a little bit on the tabletop. That's once again a stage that's just up to you. So with all of the base coats on, it is now time to shade this particular miniature down. Oh, wait, no, never mind. We're shading in a moment. I forgot to add in the brass again. Once again, bottles are gold. He's got a little pendant hanging from a, a kind of cord around his neck. And then, of course, I like doing the details in the shield and the brass. It's going to help break up the paleness of the model. And it's just going to look really cool. You can later on, if you decide you want to push all of this up to like a, a final stage, like a really like nice edge highlight, you could also add like a pestilence symbol kind of scrawled across There's those flat shields. And that would look really good. Do that in a red or a black. And it's going to look fantastic. Already, I think that looks great. Now, Mortarian Grime Shade is the one I'm going to use. Now, I feel that when that second wave of contrast paints came out, and maybe some people don't remember that, but kind of, I suppose it's nearly two years ago now that they did a second wave of contrast paints. But they also added in like 10 or 12 more shades, and I feel like they got mostly forgotten by the, the wider public. And there's some real nice gems of colors in there, like this Mortarian Grime. So instead of going for a brown or a black shade, I'm going to go for a grime, which is kind of like a dirty brown green, which is, of course, perfect for a pestilence model. It's going to do a great job on all those robes. It's going to do a great job on the shield, but especially do a great job on the skin. It's going to give you that slightly green tinged sickly look, which is going to look fantastic for pestilence. And it's just that whole thing of that same muted tone. You've, you've seen like a bunch of fancy videos out there with people airbrushing and they sit, put down these weird colors at the bottom and then they hire, layer up on top of those and it creates this man, mental undertone. Well, I have no interest in learning that. <laughs> I like to, like I said, paint armies and paint things quickly. The results they get are fantastic, but I don't think they're achievable for the average painter. Whereas throwing Mortarian Grime over the top of something to shade it down just works really well. And if you notice the two colors I held up for this thing as I grabbed the Mortarian Grime and, uh, sorry, the Plague Bear Flesh and the skin tone, I mixed them together to once again tint that skin tone a little bit green, which then of course means that when I layered up the skin, it's still going to have that sickly feel to it instead of just being that bright pink tone suddenly with the, the kind of green just in the recesses. And these are the kind of steps that will, will help these guys stand out from other things. Like you could have for three units of 40 clan rats on the table and they could be from all different clans you can have 40 of each of the models i'm painting on this table and i think it would look really cool after that shade was dry we went in for the nurgling green and gave a very quick highlight to the robes you can see that i'm just adding kind of it's almost like an edge highlight just to the real sharpest peach but anyway, i'm not being very careful i'm moving my brush rather fast finding those details and the reason for that is simple. In, in my head, there's 39 more guys I have to pick up after this guy and do this exact stage to. As a, someone who has done, you know, batch painting of a million times before and army painting and all that kind of stuff, I know, like, if, if 9 out of 10 stages on a model are so fast to do and one is not fast to do, that project will still grind to a halt. Because as soon as you get to that stage of painting where it's like, oh God, I'm going to be layering metallics for the next four hours most people are going to put down the brush and get frustrated and stop so hopefully every single step in the guides that i put forward to you guys will be fast and that's why we like those little touch highlights we like those little scratchy highlights 
That's why you don't see a lot of edge highlighting on the channel because it takes too much time. Looks great. Effort versus reward for me, it's just not worth it. As you can see, we brought back in some lead belcher and highlighted those metallics again, leaving the grimy look behind. But we didn't go crazy grimy. We say, like you wouldn't say this like a, like a nurgly model looking real grim dark and real disgusting. It's just a pestilence clan rat. I think that's why he, he stands out to me as just looking really cool. And there he is, a finished pestilence clan rat. Look at that shield. That was a contrast and a shade, nothing else. <laughs> I can't believe that. Why would anyone do anything on top of that? So yes, I will probably be painting more of these guys. Here's a couple of still images. Show you guys what he would look like on a tabletop. I did the same thing as I did in the last one. You know, any kind of pallid, bony color for some teeth and painted red eyes. Just little dots, you know, nothing crazy. Rats tend to have pink eyes. You can do them any other color you want. They're your war dollies. It's your choice. Okay, so we're on to the third and final clan rat for this particular video. And this is the Eshin one. So as like the other ones, we're going to start with Golden Flesh. It's a great base coat for skin. And like I said, these are rats. Rats are, tend to have little pink faces, little pink hands and tails. So Golden Flesh is going to look great for that. Now, Eshin is, of course, the clan of assassins. And the final result of this guy is nice, but it's not as nice as the Pestilence one. And I, it's kind of by design. You got to remember that it's like someone saying, can you paint an, a ninja? And then I give them a ninja and say, yeah, but could you make it like, you know, brighter and stand out more and a bit poppy? Like, no, it's a ninja. It's going to make it brighter and poppier. It's just going to get seen and killed. It needs to be sneaky. So this guy has to be like lots of dark tones. That's why I went for a really dark brown for the, the cloth. Now, he does have two layers of cloth. He has like a little scarf toppy bit. And I decided to do that in two tones just to break it up a little bit. Kind of black and brown shadows play into that whole aesthetic. I do go a little bit crazy with his shield. I do give him the black shield, but the red Eshin clan symbol across the front because it basically has that clan symbol already on it. Which, of course, I don't think a sneaky assassin would have. And don't get it twisted, Eshin are my favorite Skaven clan and the one that I really want to do an entire army of. And if my clan rats are going to look like this, I can put up with that for being able to include all the different assassins and death masters and all those kind of other bits and pieces into my army. Including those kind of dark purples and blacks and browns in and having them look awesome. Having those like poison drips off of blades and morning stars and not morning stars, the ninja stars and blades and stuff for the poisons. I think it's going to look really cool. But I was worried, like I said, I was really happy with the first two. And then when I got to the end with this, I was like, he's not very bright. He doesn't stand out very much. Then realizing that he's not supposed to. As you can see, I'm being careful using the black contrast as I do not want to hit the brown of the skin with it because it will stain it quite badly. And of course, doing that over the shield as well. Kind of lacquered black wood. Trying to keep some of their kind of colors disguised and... I do wonder when Eshin go to war, do they take hundreds of clan rats or it is it just armies of night runners and good runners jumping across the tops of houses and blow darts and ninja stars down on people. God, they're so cool. Fleshed hair is red. Now I decided to go for it. Like I said, the fleshed hair is red, a darker red for that clan symbol on the shield because I didn't want it to pop like the armor on the, the other guy because I still want the assassin -y look to him. I even think these guys get the best Vermin Lord. If you ever see the Vermin Lord and the one that's dedicated to the Eshin clan, he looks so cool. I don't actually own him. I own one of them built, but he's not built that way. I'm going to have to get my hands on another one and get a proper clan Eshin army up and running. I think that would be something that I would rather enjoy playing and building and collecting. Okay, and as we push forward into more of the base coats, like I said, we've done lead belcher just like before with all the other metallics. There's no need to kind of overthink things and push things you know, crazy. Like I said earlier, want to keep down the number of paints used. You shouldn't have to bankrupt yourself to buy 50 paints to paint an army. At least I feel that way anyway. There's nothing more irritating for me than watching uh, another YouTuber do a painting video and they use you know, 30 or 40 paints from 12 different paint lines and they expect the average painter to have access to those. I just think it's bad form. So with all those base coats on, it's time to shade the model. Now, like I said, because we want this guy to be nice and dark, we're going to go for null oil. So all of his shadows and all his recesses are going to be black, nice and dark. 
someone who's going to belong in the shadows and exist there. It's a model like this where I wish the only change I would make going back now is I did the same thing, the Gore Grunt of Fur for his fur tufts. I would have done a black or probably the gray fur for him to blend in a little bit more. Just darken them up, I think, would look really cool. So when the shade is finished, we are going to start the layering process. So Corvus Black is going to be used for layering his kind of little scarf. And of course, the wood grain on the shield. Just to make it pop a little bit more. Add a little bit of detail into it. I don't know what I ever did without Corvus Black. Like anyone who doesn't own Corvus Black and paints a lot of black, I recommend that paint for highlighting. It tends to be the color I do. You paint them thing an Abaddon Black, you shade it whatever way you want, and you use Corvus Black as a bit of a highlight, and it just looks great all the time. Lead Belcher brought in to highlight all the metallics, all the silver. There isn't really any brass on this particular guy. Obviously his shield symbol has been done in the red, so that's fine. He is wearing a little bit of an armored back. Obviously the gutter runners and night runners won't have that. Now I did, I was tempted to do that cult cowl around his neck in purple. Because I did look up some Eshin pictures. And some of the assassins had it. But I decided I'm going to not do that. Because I think Eshin is the way I'm going to go. I'm fairly sure, 99% sure. And I think I'm going to save that purple color for all the night runners and gutter runners and assassins. It's like if you get to that rank, you get to wear that color. If you're still just a lonely clan rat, it's blacks and browns for you. So, corn red is the uh, red I'm going to use to hi highlight the shield. Like I said, once again, not going for anything bright, not evil. So, I'm scarlet or my fist on. Nice and dark, nice and subtle, which is the way these guys should operate. This shield does look cool, the black with the red symbol on it. Now, I understand that there is obviously more clans that I could possibly do. We could do Scryer, we could do Molder. And we do one or two others and if the success of this video is kind of where, where i hope it to be and um, if the video does well enough and people are excited to see more clans or they need to see more clans then let me know in the comments below make sure you share the video watch it and uh, to, to the end do all that good stuff so that i know people are interested and if they are then of course i will do that for you guys here's the three models side by side i think they look pretty damn cool all together and then here is the Eshin guy. I took some moody, darker pictures for him because it's kind of how should he should operate. I think his shield stands out. You would kind of see him in the gloom. And then as he steps forward, the red symbol will be the first thing you see. Then his red eyes. And then you're probably dead. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. So thank you guys so much. Okay, guys, and now we have it done. Three clan rats finished up. I actually really like how they turned out. I'm very pleased with the results. I would be more than happy to see 40 clan rats painted in any one of those three color schemes. Hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, make sure to do the usual good things to support me, which is like the video, ask me a question down below in the comments, and make sure you're subscribed. It really does make a huge difference and costs you absolutely nothing extra. And once again, if you're interested in getting involved with the channel on a further basis, link down in the description is, of course, the Patreon. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.